So we've just seen the regression estimates of the causal effect of test score on house prices. But what do those coefficients mean? What exactly, how do we interpret them? Well, here she's listed those coefficients once again, just for reference. And in this table, she's converted these coefficients into economically meaningful numbers. So over here is the, what she calls the basic hedonic regression. That's including all of our houses in the sample, where we don't worry about the regression as continuity. We include everything. So this is a confounded estimate here. But let's just see if it was the truth, what would it mean? Well, if we took uh, test scores and increased them by 5%, then this estimate suggests that we'd get a 5% increase in a ho our house price. Or if you took a house that was $188,000, it would get about a $9,000 increase in its value due to a 5% change in test score. But we know that we don't really believe this number because this uh, includes all those confounding effects. We're not using the RDD idea here. Over here, you see 0.35 sample, that's the distance to the border, or 0.20 sample, that's the distance to the border. So these estimates are all using the RDD idea. And we get it 0 0.016, 0 0.013, 0 0.015. So here, the coefficients are about half, and the interpretation also cuts down by about half. In if we increase test scores by 5%, then instead of getting a 5% increase in house price, we only get something around a 2% increase in house price. And that translates to, if you took a house that was $188,000, something around a $4,000-ish uh, increase in its overall value. So that's the main way that we interpret economically what these coefficients mean, and we can see that if we don't control, use the RDD to control for all these confounders, we get an effect that's m almost twice or more than twice as large as once we actually do control for these confounders using the RDD analysis. And even though we are, the estimate gets smaller, this is still quite a large number. So that's a pretty interesting finding. So that's the main results from this paper by Sandra Black on the effect of school test scores on house prices. Let's conclude by just thinking about how we check the validity of our assumption needed to apply the RDD analysis. Well, what was that assumption again? It's that houses just north of this border are basically the same as houses just south of the border. So that the only difference between them is that one of them has a high quality school and one of them has a low quality school. Everything else is the same. So RDD analysis looks very similar to a randomized experiment. We've got our treatment group, these houses, and our control group, these houses. So just like in randomized experiments and natural experiments, we can do a balance check. We can look at other variables, other covariates of interest for these houses and compare the val average values of those variables for the houses in the control with the houses in the treatment group. And they should be the same, they should be balanced. That's what a balance check does. So for example, we could look at the average income of houses very close to the border and compare it to the average income of houses uh, north of the border. They should be the same. If they're not, that suggests that actually this isn't a good comparison. For example, maybe this is a major road that's dividing two very different neighborhoods. Maybe up here it's more wealthy and here it's less wealthy. And so actually that would be a confounding variable. That even though we're looking very close to the border, the border was drawn that way for a reason maybe. Maybe it's some kind of gerrymandering for school districts. This is something we'd have to worry about and check to make sure that we're actually getting a good comparison, a good treatment and control group where the only difference is the school, school quality and not some other confounding variable. So that's one main thing that a lot of these papers are going to spend time on, checking these assumptions, showing that they're valid, and that we can actually draw a good causal inference from this kind of analysis.